Hi folks, welcome to Coffee and Revelation on Wednesday. We uh, are at chapter 22, verse 12. And again, you get fed up me saying this, but just some great verses. Listen to this. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me and I'll give to each person according to what they have done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. In Matthew 25, 21, Jesus says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Which sets me to thinking about Hebrews telling us that Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured the cross. Or Psalm 22, which was quoted by Jesus on the cross. That although it's such a mournful psalm, at the end there's rejoicing because of the reward that is Christ. And what he's promising is a reward for his people. Okay, a few things about that, that if you're thinking, you've got some questions. I'm coming soon, but this was written 2,000 years ago. So how does that work out? Well, you could argue, and I would certainly argue, that uh, whether this event would occur in one year or 5,000 years, it can still be referred to as near because it's the major next event to occur in God's great plan of redemption. And then the objections that John was dealing with here, Peter also dealt with, and in 2 Peter 3, he answers it. Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. So, the reason that the world is not destroyed just now, the reason that the world is not remade and renewed, the reason that the judgment day hasn't come is because God is still saving his people. And he's telling us, hang on, because the reward is near. Um... He cites, my reward is with me, he, it, it's really citing Isaiah chapter 40. Behold, the Lord comes with strength. Behold, his reward is with him and the work before him. That's from the Septuagint version of it. But uh, his recompense accompanies him. And you know, incidentally, after that in Isaiah, it talks about how this reward, and I think it's connected, that he leads his flock like a shepherd. He carries the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Oh, that was an emergency sign. I hope it's not too much for me. Let me just finish recording this. Anyway, um, and I think it's just really beautiful. Now, the other question, of course, is I will give to each person according to what they have done. Does this mean it's on the basis of good works that a person will be redeemed or justified? Now, in Isaiah 40, in Isaiah 62, 11, throughout the New Testament, throughout Revelation, reward and works focus on salvation. Good works apart from Christ can save no one. The Bible is very clear about that, since perfection is required to be accepted with God. So what we have done here refers, I think, to our hold on Christ, to uh, are we following Christ? And I think... I will give to each person according to what they have done, but unbelievers are justly judged. Unbelievers are justly judged. We're not saved because of the good that we do. We're saved because of the good one that we trust in. Just one more thing. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We've already had in 1a and 21.6 God being the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end, 21.6. And Christ has been called the first as the last. So it's bringing all those together and I'm not going to talk about those again. All of these titles though, it's interesting, they're used in the Old Testament of God. They are used of Christ here. I like, I was reading this, Christ's presence and sovereignty over the beginning of creation, over the end of creation, are boldly stated in order to indicate that he is also present and sovereign over all events in between. I just think that's lovely. Revel Genesis 1 to 3, 
In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Without him nothing was made that has been made. That, that's Genesis 1 to 3. And we come to the end of the Bible, Revelation 21, 22. And this is the thing that's been stunning me looking at all of this is just how, how absolutely intermeshed these are, how absolutely joined together. And uh, Christ is there in the beginning. Christ is there at the end. Christ is sovereign at the beginning. Christ is sovereign at the end. Christ is sovereign through it all. And guess what? Whatever's happened to you, Christ is sovereign right now. God bless you.